Iraq Veterans Against the War's third point of unity demands full benefits, adequate health care, including mental health, and other support for returning servicemen and women. It is a crime that many soldiers suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder and other mental health conditions have to fight to get their conditions recognized by the military. They are returning home to grapple with unemployment, homelessness, substance abuse, and even suicide. So now I get to go to a 15-minute therapy session once every 30 days. And when I show up to my 15-minute therapy session, there's 15 other Vietnam vets that have the same 8 a.m. appointment that I do, and we all wait around in the lobby. Every single one of these vets is there seeking help and treatment for the same thing that I'm seeking help and treatment for, and they're all 30 years older than I am. They've been in the system 30 years longer. They've been taking the same medications for 30 years, the same therapists for 30 years, and they're still there, and they still have the same problem. So obviously, it doesn't work. So when I'm not at the VA, and I'm around town, everywhere I go, I see homeless vets. Because one third of the, better, of the homeless population is veterans. And that's disgusting. Um, you won't find a more rigorous interview process in the entire world than what it takes to join the United States military. To misdiagnose someone and tell them that they have a pre-existing medical condition that wasn't caught in the most rigorous screening process in the entire world for the greatest military in the entire world is hearsay. It's a lie. Everybody knows it's a lie. I know when I was in boot camp, I didn't see anybody that had any, had any kind of mental trauma. In fact, when I was going through the, the, the process, they weeded people out. And they said, you can't join. It says here you once told you told a recruiter that you thought about killing yourself one time. We don't allow that in the military, and we're sorry. I've seen that with my own eyes. So these men are lied to. These men are misdiagnosed. And once they're misdiagnosed, they can't reach the VA. They can't get help for something that was a pre-existing condition because it wasn't caused by the military. It, it, it is so detrimental. It is so frustrating. It is so angering to me. And I'm sure every single vet in this room that has ever walked into a VA hospital on their own accord to seek treatment or to somehow comfort the people that are trapped inside of these establishments. 10,000 Iraq war vets have committed suicide. My name is Zoli Peter Goodman. I'm a proud warrior and a prouder patriot. And that's my problem with the VA. So, they uh, informed me that I did have two years worth of free medical service, but with the way things were going, with the way uh, the appointment setting was going, and the amount of time I was actually seeing someone wasn't really working out. The ratio was like 30 minutes to an hour of seeing somebody, but the appointments would be set up for like a month or two months later. And because I was a full-time student, um, it was even worse because then I would have to reschedule if I missed the appointment. If I missed the appointment in 30 minutes, the doctor would no longer be available and I'd have to reschedule, so that meant another two months. So two years worth of medical service is nothing. It just doesn't work out. And it was throughout Iraq Veterans Against the War that I found a place that would help vets recuperate and continue their lives after the military. Uh, I found a place that was very close to the school that I wanted to go to. And I was, again, surprised that the VA system wasn't going to help me even at this time of need. And I was, uh, I was also reluctant to go back to the system. But I was encouraged that I should because if I don't go back to the system, then they'll never know and that I'll be another casualty of the system. I guess my main message is that, you know, we, we all know how many problems there are with VA healthcare, but military healthcare doesn't really seem to get much attention because soldiers are afraid to speak out on those issues. And when they're not getting the care that they were promised, the care that they have earned through their service, then I think it's most important for them to start speaking out about that. It has worked for me. And I encourage any other soldiers who are facing these issues 
don't keep it quiet. And, you know, unfortunately, in many cases, you can't rely on your chain of command to fix these problems. We st stepped up to serve our country, and we haven't asked for a whole lot in return. But proper health care should be at a bare minimum what we're entitled to. The fact that we're not getting that, it, it makes me sick because I have seen too many of my brothers and sisters suffering for that, and we are tired of suffering, so. No veteran should have to go without. And not only that, no American should have to go out without health care. The mission of the VA to care for our nation's veterans is one of awesome responsibility. I personally believe that the best preventative health care and this is a day and age where we're all about preventative health care, for our soldiers in uniform is to not use them to fight illegal occupations in the first place. But so long as our government is going to force our soldiers to continue fighting and serving in these occupations, I would call upon all members and employees, workers at the VA to remember our pledge to serve and provide for our returning veterans. And I think that it's so important for them to realize that they do not lose their right of freedom of speech just because they're a federal employee. He um, standing by the refrigerator and he grabbed his dog tags and he tossed them to her and he called himself a murderer. We were um, to find out that these dog tags included two Iraqi soldiers that he feels or he, he knows he's personally responsible for their deaths. His private therapist who saw him the last seven weeks of his life said he didn't, he didn't wear them as a trophy, but he wore them to honor these men. Yeah. One of them being just before he was gonna tell her about the bumps in the road, the children they were told not to stop their vehicles for and just not to look back. In their records, they say the grandfather pleaded for someone to help his grandson. Neither our veterans nor their families should ever have to beg for the care they should be entitled to. <laughs> My child was struggling to survive and we didn't know who to turn to. There was no follow-up call from the VA, no outreach, though they knew he was in crisis. We had no guidance. What to say to him, how to handle his situation. You hear a lot about supporting our troops, but I'll tell you, we felt isolated, abandoned, and alone. While the rest of the country lived on, going to Disney World, shopping, living their daily lives, our days consisted of constant fear, apprehension, helplessness, while we watched this young man being consumed by this cancer that ravaged his soul. The words to a song that he listened to over and over again described him. Whatever, Whatever happened to the young man's heart, swallowed by pain as he slowly fell apart. At about 11.30, quarter 12, Jeffrey asked me for the second time within the past 10 days if he could just sit in my lap and I could rock him for about, well, for a while, and we did. We sat there for about 45 minutes and I was rocking Jeff and we were in total silence. As his private therapist that we had hired had said, it was his last harbor and his last place of refuge. The next, more, the next day I came home, it was about quarter after seven. I held Jeff one last time as I lowered his body from the rafters and um, took the holes from around his neck. We need to have the VA challenge itself to move itself from being a lumbering, slothful behemoth to a dynamic, energized, active caregiver. Why? Why do we as a nation stand seemingly silent on the sideline? and permit those who set and make policy to continue to do the things that they are doing? Why do we allow politics to trump the needs of the veterans? Why is it that veteran care continues to be a discretionary funding system rather than a predictable funding system? In the Veteran Benefits Administration, VBA, there was over 600,000 disability claims that were backlogged because there was not staff available to process these claims. 
again, these are decisions that are being made by the people that we elect to not fund, to not staff, and as a result, it is adversely impacting the veteran. We wave the flag and say we love our veteran, but then we treat our veteran this way. The Pentagon's hotline uh, just reported last week that their increase of calls have increased 40% each year since 2004, and no one in this room would be surprised with that. Um, Army reports on March 6th, a new study out of, of veteran uh, PTSD, the rates in those who are serving a third tour or fourth tour, amazing, isn't it? Third or fourth tour, those rates are at a third now, reporting mental illness or and or PTSD. And we're talking about 1.3 million veterans that have already been home from these wards and are out. 